Uh, oh, Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special program. So today we have for to to celebrate Activist Appreciation Month, we have a special series of activist author interviews. And today we're going to interview some activist authors who are here with us. And I'm so excited to introduce them coming up. Uh, this special program is brought to you by In Defense of Animals, and we offer um, emotional and spiritual tools for animal activists through our sustainable activism campaign, and we help people to transition to a vegan diet through our Carnivores Anonymous program, which is a 12-step program to help people transition with acceptance and love to a plant-based lifestyle. So today, we are sharing a wonderful new book by Nicole Desserwe and also uh, by Whitney Lauritsen. And first, I'd like to give you a little bit more information about them. Um, I will be your host. My name is Lisa Levinson, and I work with In Defense of Animals on the Sustainable Activism Campaign. So it's my pleasure to let you know a little bit more about our special speakers today. So, Nicole Deserwe is a vegan chef with a culinary background from Le Cordon Bleu that comes from a long heritage of family chefs. She is building a worldwide conscious media empire to inspire vegan newbies with her uplifting and entertaining YouTube channel as one of the cornerstones. You can follow Nicole's journey online at Nicole Deserwe on Instagram and on YouTube. We're also joined by co-author Whitney Lauritsen, who is the founder of Eco Vegan Gal. She's a con content creator, business coach, and healthy living crusader. With more than 5 million views, her YouTube channels share vegan lifestyle advice, recipes, product recipes, reviews, interviews, and inspiration for living in harmony with the body and the planet. She is a co-host of This Might Get Uncomfortable, which is a podcast, which, and also um, with her best pal, Jason, they also run a wellness brand, um, Well Eventure, <laughs> and she's the author of another book called Healthy Organic Vegan on a Budget, and today you can connect with her at WhitneyLauritsen.com. Today what we have is they're going to share their new book. And I'm going to let them tell you a little bit more about it. First, I get to, uh, we're going to do this interview style. So first, I'd like it if we, we could share the full title of your book. So would one of you like to share that? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for the wonderful intro. Yes. So I'm Whitney, and this is Nicole. Hi. And this is our book, The Vegan Ketogenic Diet Cookbook. <laughs> so this is, i uh, got a 75 high-fat low carb dairy free recipes and our aim as it says right on the back of the book is to help you boost your health and wellness with the power of vegan and keto together oh that is so awesome <laughs> so yeah. i'd like like for you to share a little bit about your background and why you both decided to write a book about vegan keto sure do you want to start sure okay <laughs> i well I've, as you said in the intro i've been doing vegan content for many years, over 10 years now. And I went vegan in 2003. So it's been a big part of my personal and professional journey. And along that way, I'm really interested in seeing how to feel my best. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by all the different elements of the plant-based diet. I've done the raw food diet. I've done 80-10-10. So I've done both low carb and high carb diets. I have gone gluten-free and soy-free. I've tried all these different variations of it, just try, trying to figure out what works best for me. And I decided to try out the keto diet out of curiosity. And because I was struggling with my weight, a bunch back in summer 2018 and I kept hearing all these things about the keto diet 
and, and the weight loss benefits of it. So at that point, I felt like maybe I should give it a try, but I would only, of course, do it if I could do it vegan. And back in 2018, there weren't that many people talking about vegan and keto together. In fact, I remember Googling vegan keto and barely finding any information. <laughs> now in February, 2020, there's a lot more information about that, which is really exciting. And so we wanted to add our best practices and things that we've learned along the way. So I'm added in my personal experience doing the diet off and on for since August 2018. It's been a little under a year and a half. And uh, Nicole is adding her incredible background as a chef and her own personal experiences with trying out a low carb diet. Yeah. Um, and for me, I was so excited uh, when Whitney came to me with this project. Um, I have been vegan for eight years now. And um, there was a period of time when one of my close friends actually had a baby that was struggling with cancer. And I was in a direct blood match for her. And the first time I went to go donate blood, I was rejected because my iron was low. And I found out about my blood type O positive that we do really well with high iron, high fat diets. And now nobody said the word keto when I was discovering this, but you know that, that, that I would do better with low grains and, and focusing on lots of iron and, and, and fat and um, keeping the carbs and the sugars low. And I transitioned and 10 days later, I was able to donate blood to the this baby and continued to through the duration of her treatment and she's cancer free now um, which is amazing miracle and I got the added benefit of being able to practice this dietary shift that helped me with muscle recovery mental clarity I felt alive I felt amazing actually uh, when I made the shift and I just had a ton of energy and that's just kind of been how I roll yeah wow that is so awesome and also um, really, the word that's coming to me is, is noble of you to do that. What a wonderful gift to Aww. give this sweet baby. I was so just, I felt actually really honored that I was able to do that. I mean, mm -hmm. to be able to participate so directly with the healing process was such a blessing. And also to make an impact on all the nurses there. I remember when I told them I was plant-based um, you know, the, and then I was rejected for the iron. It was mm. kind of, I was, I felt kind of embarrassed actually, because mm. I wanted to show that, you know, vegan is very healthy. And I just, you know, maybe I had slacked off or wasn't really as focused on my iron, but they were, it was just incredible. They were just so blown away when I came back 10 days later and had perfect iron and they couldn't believe I was vegan. And so it was just nice to be able to open people's eyes to the possibility of this being, a lifestyle where you can actually really thrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And yes, another th definitely. big motivation for us is because we've seen the keto diet become so trendy. Mm -hmm. it, so many people, when they talk about keto are talking about the animal products. Yeah. And, and I think in a way keto is actually uh, causing a lot of people to eat more animal products, yeah. right? They've increased the amount of bacon, you know, suddenly it's like, everything's about bacon again. And mm. uh, people are eating dairy products and, and um, you know, butter has become really popular. You're mixing butter in your coffee or ghee in your coffee. Yeah. And uh, it's just been really nice for us to have been able to do all this research and add in personal experience plus recipes to show people that they don't have to eat animal products and do keto. A lot of people choose to do keto for different reasons, whether it's weight loss or they want to improve their metabolism or they want to increase their energy or they're, they're struggling with inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, people have also done it for um, medical issues. So sometimes doctors will actually recommend doing a low carb diet for that reason or increasing the amount of fat. There's a lot of benefits to the brain. So whatever the reason is that somebody's interested in keto, we just want to show that you can do it without any animal products. So you can right. do it, you know, fully plant-based. Yeah. And we've also heard some people that are currently vegan want to take a pause from their vegan diet to try keto because of all the, the things that they're hearing. And so it was kind of like, Hey, Wait, what, no, don't do that. Yeah, what, what can we do to keep people <laughs> vegan and allow them to experiment with the keto diet yeah. and then vice versa, introduce all anybody who's already doing the keto diet to a plant-based way of eating. Right. Yeah. So for somebody who's um, maybe a beginner like me, what is keto? So it's in essence um, a very high fat, 
low carb, moderate protein diet that puts your body into a state of ketosis where instead of burning sugar or carbohydrates for fuel, you're burning fat for fuel. And there's a lot of data out there that shows that this can be a really effective um, state of your body. So um, that's you know, it leads to things like she was talking like mental clarity, increased right. energy, higher metabolism. And the metabolism is, is probably one of the biggest benefits of it. Uh, but there are certainly a lot of other things that you can experience as a result of it. And it's been around for quite a long time. Some people are familiar with it because uh, it was very popular for Atkins, but keto is different from Atkins. It's based in higher quality food for the most part. And, um, you know, we always recommend talking to your doctor before trying something out and figuring out if keto is right for you and also how long you should be doing it and, and doing as much research as you can about keto because it can get quite complex. And one thing that we've tried to do in our book is just to break it down and simplify it. And so instead of, in, in addition to giving you all the recipes, also really explain how to do keto right. effectively. Mm. So how do you, how do you explain how to do the vegan keto diet? Hey, um, you know, it's, you're just going to be focusing on keeping the carbohydrates very low. Mm -hmm. You're going to be avoiding sugars and grains. There's um, a ton of resources that we actually have in the book of vegetables that are totally acceptable you know, and then things that you should enjoy in moderation. You can even enjoy fruits, certain citruses, berries, and stuff like that that are actually lower in sugar and you still get all of your antioxidants. So, you know, for me, you know, going through the process of writing the recipes, when I looked at what were the kind of acceptable vegetables, as a chef, I felt like, well, this is a playground, you know, because <laughs> yeah. there actually there's was so much and people don't realize there's so many vegetables that you can have. There were fruits, we, there was squash, there was just so many things that were a yes that I was like, we can really make anything with this yes list. Um, yeah, we made a, a chart in the book. It's, it's called Foods to Enjoy versus Foods to Avoid. Right. And it's, it's broken down into three, column, or three, three columns and multiple rows. So we have the enjoy section, which if you can see this on camera, the vegetable section is actually quite in-depth. And then there's an in moderation section. Right. So we're actually not trying to make this super black and white, like don't eat this and only eat that. We also feel like there's room in between in the moderation because we don't want anyone to feel deprived. Right. So we also include the things that are lower in sugar that you can have every once in a while. And then foods to avoid. And again, it's about avoiding versus like, don't do it at all. Maybe like it's probably not best to have it if you want to get into full ketosis. And this is the other thing that's important to know is there's different variations of a ketosis. It depends on your body. It depends on, on how deep of that state that you want to go into. So it's really helpful to, to just kind of experiment it, with it a lot. And we try to encourage that throughout the book is not to be too rigid in your mentality. I think some people are afraid of, of keto because they're like, well, it's not healthy to cut out these foods. And we're not saying to cut them out entirely. We're mm -hmm. saying avoid them have them in moderation and then focus on the foods that are, are lower in carbohydrates if you want to reach ketosis. So yeah, the book, the book does outline all of that. So it has the vegetables, seeds and nuts, fats and oils, fruits, um, grains and flours, which you know, you're mostly avoiding, although you can have nut flowers and coconut flour. Mm -hmm. uh, animal products are obviously, we recommend avoiding completely avoiding. <laughs> That's like the one thing on Just the list. None. <laughs> uh, we have sweeteners, spices and seasonings, beverages and legumes and beans, which are another thing you mainly avoid. Although tofu, tempeh, edamame, uh, various versions of, of soy can be had in, in moderation on the keto diet. Yeah. Can you give us just an example of a few of the maybe foods that might be on there so I can get a yeah, visual. <laughs> absolutely. Sure. So, well, let me pull up this page. It has a really nice, nice yeah. list of that. I think one of the most, my favorite sources of fat is macadamia nuts and oh, avocados. Avocados. So most vegans love avocados. And unless you're allergic to nuts, it's really exciting that you can have macadamia nuts and you can have cashews and almonds and all sorts of seeds. So those are really great. So you can also, if, you, if you're okay with it, have oil. Oil is a pretty popular thing on the keto diet, although we know a lot of vegans like to avoid that. So we do have a bunch of recipes in the book that are oil-free, but if you 
you are okay with having oils, you can get a high, really high quality extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil. Those are pretty big on the keto diet. And then when it comes to protein, you know, similar to the sources that you would normally get. I mean, soy is a really great source of protein if you're having that. But as many vegans know, there's protein in pretty much every food every plant-based food. It's just a matter of how much of it, right? And the keto diet's a moderate protein diet. So we actually talk about, um, you know, how much to have. So you can get that from the seeds and the almonds, cashews, chia seeds, and hemp seeds, and and sesame seeds. Those are all really rich in that as well. Yes, exactly. We have a pea recipe, which also (laughs) is something to have in moderation, but Nicole was brilliant in, in finding the right amount of the foods to put in the recipes so that it wouldn't be too high carb. Right. And that's one of your favorite recipes. It's one of my book. favorite recipes. It's a book. great pea soup. It's a pea soup. It's so <laughs> And it's so easy. We've made it. So, you know, I'm a chef. I usually saute everything and do it. But as an experiment um, over, I think it was around Halloween. You made that We soup. made it. We were going in to a party Instapot. and we, threw, we just threw everything in the Instapot. Didn't know if it was going to work or not. We never tried it. Seven minutes later, we had like the best pea soup ever. There's some really good soups in the book. Yeah, we didn't even make it to the party. We stayed home and ate it all. (laughs) Yeah, that's what happened. I know. We snooped out. Um, There's also a little section here, just to finish answering that question, called the Vegan Keto Kitchen. And we break down pantry essentials, refrigerated essentials, and other perishable essentials. So to lift off some things that we find are essential to a vegan keto diet would be things like, um, you know, I mentioned nuts, but also nut butters are really wonderful seeds and seed butters as well Uh, dried spices and seasoning sugar-free sweeteners there's a bunch of different options for that Um, fermented foods we're really passionate about helping heal your gut and that's actually one thing that i really benefited from when i transitioned over to a low carb diet is i found like my digestion really improved i've struggled with my digestion a lot and it's been tough as a as a vegan because i kind of had this idea that I had to eat a lot of legumes, but legumes don't really agree with my body. So mm-hmm. for me, doing a very minimal legume diet actually has helped me a lot in finding protein from other sources. And then I think also I've been sensitive to grains for a long time and didn't yeah. realize it. So doing a grain-free diet works well. So another reason to benefit your body is to, especially your gut, is to have those fermented foods like kimchi and pickles and sauerkraut. Um, we, we encourage people to have fresh herbs as well. So mm, parsley and cilantro and yeah. basil and all of that. Um, and then, you know, the, the low carb produce like broccoli, cauliflower, those are really big on the diet. Low glycemic fruits like berries, as she mentioned, right. plant, plant-based fruit. milks, nut-based cheeses, um, sprouts, organic tofu. I mean, we have it all listed in here just to make it as simple as possible. We could go on and on. So as you can see, the, the, the diet does include a lot of foods. We're big proponents in, in what can we focus on, on having versus what are, instead of focusing on what you what can't, can't have, have yeah. right? It's like think, looking at things as an abundance and the positive. we're so happy that this cover our uh, photo was chosen because it just shows all the different colors that you can have on a vegan keto diet. So, you know, just making sure that you're eating the rainbow (laughs) so you can get all your nutrients, right? Yeah. Mm, that's awesome. Thank you so yeah. much for giving us like the, I would say nuts and bolts, but maybe I should say, you know, seeds and nuts, nuts or seeds. something <laughs> <laughs> of, of what, what you really put together. Like you've done so much research for this book. And I think that will really help people like me who don't know much about it mm-hmm. to get the full picture of what specifically it means to be a vegan keto. Yeah. And I also would say that this recipe book is for everybody. Even if you don't plan on doing a keto diet specifically, it's still worth picking it up simply for Nicole's recipes. Oh. You know, I was approached about doing this cookbook last summer and they said that I could you know, suggest a chef and Nicole was the very first person I thought of because I tried so many amazing recipes of hers yeah. and she just did phenomenal work. Like one of my favorite dishes in there is the French onion soup. I know yeah. we already mentioned another soup, but we love soup and the, you know, it's winter time it's right now. It's been winter. So we've been eating the soups. Yeah, yeah. And this, we shared this French onion soup with somebody who's not even vegan. And so he, not only did he love it, 
as a keto soup, but as a vegan soup. And, and he's somebody that would normally add in bread and cheese and, you know, all these other things into it. Nicole is able to show how you can still get the incredible flavor experience of a dish without using animal products and without adding a ton of carbohydrates into it. Yeah. It's been really Mm -hmm. rewarding to see the recipes um, just kind of come together. And you know, what was fun too, is some of the recipes really hadn't been adapted that much. It's kind of like, there was a lot of things before gluten-free hit the shelves that were just gluten-free. And now all of a sudden they had the label, but we didn't know, but they were gluten-free the whole time. Yeah, it, There's some recipes in the book that just naturally happen to, happen to be keto technically, you know, and then, you know, just put them with this collection of other things. And there, there were other dishes that we made adjustments to get the carb count uh, right and get the macros correct. But there was a lot of dishes that I was already really enjoying that were just naturally fell under the keto guidelines. Like your favorite, she has- my favorite amazing so. uh, kale tahini salad yeah. that I actually am going to make today because it's so satisfying. So there's, you know, that's the other thing we want to share is that there's probably foods that people eat all the time that happen to be keto already. So you don't even need to make as big of a change as you might think. Right. Hmm. Wow. This is really eye opening for me. So I'm curious, what sort of benefits have you found from eating vegan keto? Yeah. I mean, for me, I, you know, I'm I'm always consider myself a kind of athlete, uh, even though I don't do any sports or anything, but I've always trained and I've had a faster uh, muscle recovery time. I've had less inflammation and I used to have pain in my knees and my low back and I don't notice that as much anymore. Um, And then just mental clarity and energetic function and, you know, overall less inflammation, even, you know, in my face, I've noticed less inflammation. Mm -hmm. Me too. Absolutely. I would say the same thing that um, because of a lot of the digestive issues I've had throughout my life. I think reducing the legumes, which have really upset my stomach, despite as much as I love legumes, they just, they don't work for me. And so I I struggle with my my digestion so much on the vegan diet before I, I realized that I probably just need to minimize them. So, you know, like all that discomfort, the bloating and all the other digestive stuff nobody likes to talk about (laughs) that I was experiencing. And now it's just so minimal. And I think that was contributing to my own inflammation. So I do see it in my face as Nicole is saying, the mental clarity for sure. And also reducing cravings. That's probably one of the biggest benefits that I've found. And I see as, because I'm not super strict keto, I've gone through phases of being stricter and really following the, the specific, uh, percentages, right? So there's, as we talk about in the book, there's different percentages that can lead to your body getting into ketosis, which is the whole state that you're aiming for. But I actually just find doing a lower moderate carb diet, I still feel a lot of the same benefits. However, when I've increased my carbs on my diet, I notice my cravings come back. And totally. I am somebody yeah. that can really get out of control with my cravings, right. especially for sugar. And I think a lot of people are very hooked on sugar. So going keto helped me raise my awareness and, and feel more focused on savory foods. Whereas before I used to just overeat so many carbohydrates and I was just getting out of control and not feeling my best on it. it caused me to gain weight. It caused me to have digestive challenges. And um, yeah, I mean, even when I did things like 80, 10, 10, which are really based in, in like fruits and sugars from fruits, I just, I didn't find it as sustainable. And I felt like all I wanted to eat was sugar all the time. And so for me, eating a lower carb diet has just helped me maintain those cravings so that I can focus on eating a lot of of really great vegetables and nuts and seeds and things that make me feel a little bit better. Yeah. Wow. Well, this kind of leads into my next question, which is um, how do you feel about high carb diets? I know that there's some uh, books out there that are vegan related that, that promote high carb diets. I mean, I think, I think it's all about finding what works for you. You know, years ago when I tried out 80, 10, 10, which is basically a a high carb, low fat diet, I was really impressed by the research. I, I have friends that are, have made whole careers based on that. And I, you know, they seem, it seems to work really well for them yeah. and, and they're thriving. They look great. They, they seem really healthy. They have a lot of great research to back it up. Um, I've also f- found that there's so much compelling data about um, 
low oil diets and uh, sugar-free diets on, on a different level of the spectrum. But there, there's certainly a lot of people that make compelling arguments for a high carb diet. And I think if that works for you, wonderful. Mm-hmm. We're not trying to say that keto is the way. We're not saying it's the only way, it's the best way. It's something that you should be doing throughout your life. Um, we have just had really positive experiences with it. Right. So we're just saying like, here's another option to consider. Yeah. And here's something that you can try out and see how you feel. Totally. And as I just mentioned, for me, I did not find a raw food diet or an 80-10-10 diet, high carb diet. Uh, they didn't feel like sustainable for me. Whereas this, a lower carb diet, I feel much better on. And totally. um, I don't know why exactly, but... <laughs> but that just seemed to be the case. So I'm really glad that I tried it out and um, it's working for me right now, but who knows? I could be saying something different in the future. And, and um, I think that both of us have a very flexible mentality. We feel like as long as people are vegan, (laughs) we're (laughs) we're thrilled, right? Yeah. Yeah, We want to encourage people to eat eat plants, any little or no uh, animal products. Right. That's our big, big aim. And um, it's true plant-based. Yeah. How about you? Well, I had such an interesting um, situation happen when I first went vegan eight years ago. I had a boyfriend at the time and, um, you know, not to bring back the blood type thing, but totally different blood types. And, you know, like many newbie vegans, you end up replacing that lean protein with some sort of carbohydrate, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're still trying to figure out what to eat. And I kind of blew up a little bit. I I, your body. Yeah, I gained Mm -hmm. like 12 pounds and I'm only 5'5". So that was, that felt like a lot to me. And he just like dropped all this weight and was just like zipping around like a, like a little jet. And I was like, and I was lethargic and heavy and I really believed in what I was doing, but I didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And that's just to say that, there's no cut, copy, paste, one all be all diet for humans because we're different. Our bodies are different. So he was really excelling on a high carb vegan diet and I wasn't, you know, and then I figured it out and I made my shift and I felt great. So, you know, you know, just echoing also what Whitney was saying is that I just don't think that there's a cut, copy, paste. I don't think that there's only one answer. I think each person really, which we encourage throughout the book, tapping into your own body's intuition and and listening to your body and observing how your body responds and mm-hmm. finding what works for you. Yeah, and also we all we will always recommend speaking to a medical professional. Totally. So going to a nutritionist, anybody who's knowledgeable, a dietitian, a health coach, somebody that can really guide you for, through figuring this out. And lastly, I would say doing your own research. You know, yeah. I love reading books. I read so many books about the vegan diet, about other non-vegan diets, just to see different perspectives. And then I try things out and figure out how it's going to work best for me. I think that's, that's a good approach. So. so is there any other advice that you might have for people who want to try vegan keto? Um, get our book. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> get our book because it will help you. Yeah. And also there's a bunch of resources in the book too, but you can also find these online. I think when you're first getting started, the best thing is to find like a couple great recipes that can be your staples for you to lean on. And then there's these incredible products out there. You know, we love, um, was it Boo Bar? Yes. Yes. There's, yep. there's some vegan keto bars out there that are great when you're food just- Food bars. Yeah, food yeah. bars that are, you just, when you're first getting started, it's great just to have those on your person because when the cravings hit or the hunger strikes, you have something that's going to work for you that- um, you know, it's, it's just on the go mm-hmm. and then lean on, like get a few staples that are just like, great, like figure out what your breakfast is going to be, maybe yep. meal prep it, make five of them. So as you're going throughout your busy week, you can just grab it and just run to the office or whatever it is and just lock in. Like, I just tell everyone like lock in three recipes that you feel great about, and then we can build from there. Yeah. And then it's also, as I mentioned, there's a ton of accidentally vegan keto products, totally. like the beyond burger is one of my favorite <laughs> vegan products, period. And when I found out that was vegan and keto, I was like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. If I can still have a, my favorite plant-based burger and just wrap it in lettuce instead of a bun. bun. Like right now, I, I live in Los Angeles. And when I'm short on time, 
or even going on a road trip, one place I'll go to is a restaurant on the West Coast, Coast called Carl's Jr. And they have the Beyond Burger and you can, they even say on their menu, like get it low carb, which means just wrapping it in rice. I mean, rice. Lettuce. Lettuce. <laughs> That's, why I said rice. That's certainly not keto. Not rice. Uh, wrapping it in, in <laughs> lettuce. And uh, you can get, you know, the tomato and the onion and the with jalapenos. You can add avocado. Spice you can make up. a really delicious burger and get it at a fast food rest restaurant. And now there's all sorts of restaurants around the country and, and shortly the world that are offering products like Beyond Meat. So you can go eat fast food or just have a great salad. You know, that's one of my other go-tos when I go out to eat is I'll just have a big salad with lettuce and tomato and olives. Most and avocado on there. Exactly. Avocado. Yeah, you fill yourself you could up. have some tempeh on there, some nuts and seeds mm. and carrots. I mean, just have a great salad and put some olive oil and vinegar on there, you know, and it's, it's so simple. Uh, yeah. So in the book, we actually have tips on how to eat out too, because there oh. are some, some ways to navigate that. And then we also have the seven tips for success section. Ooh. And I'll read that off real quick. So number one is to remember your intention, like figure out why you're doing this, just like with anything else, such as veganism. Uh, there are times where you might feel tempted and uh, always coming back to why you're doing something is really, really helpful. Uh, number two kind of ties into what Nicole is saying is to begin every week by looking at your schedule. Right. So really planning out like, what is this week going to look like and, and how can I stick with something that I'm, I'm trying out or really committed to? And if that's meal planning, we have meal plans in here. We have two weeks of meal plans so you can guide you through all the recipes and shopping lists to make it super simple. Number three is to track your food intake. So uh, you can keep a little handwritten journal or you can use a mobile app. We, we list out a few of them in the book right. that you can use. That's how I actually Very went helpful. through keto when I was like super strict about it is I used an app to track everything I was eating and it really helped me make sure I was getting into ketosis and, and uh, know, make sure that I was getting all the nutrients too. So th these apps will not only tell you how much fat, protein and carbohydrates you're having, mm -hmm. you also get the micronutrients. So you'll find out like, are you getting enough of everything else that you need, the, the vitamins, the minerals, just to make sure that your body is really healthy. Uh, number four is to embrace internet food shopping. So, you know, not everybody has access to a really phenomenal health store and some health stores have really high prices. So you can get great deals online. Yes. There are all sorts of delivery services or um, sh online shopping sites that you can go and, and gr get great prices. Number five is if you're having a craving for something, uh, you can try uh, just increasing your fat. So some people that are feeling like, we certainly don't want anyone on, on a diet to feel like they're deprived. And I think something that a lot of people experience when they're trying something new is like they, their body's getting used to that new way of eating. Right. And you'll have this feeling of like, oh, I really want sugar or, oh, oh, I don't feel full enough. Well, you can simply just increase your fat intake on the plant-based diet by having some nuts or having like a spoonful of a nut butter. You, if you're okay with having more oil, you could have a spoonful of coconut oil. Actually, that's very satisfying. And then Nicole has some great recipes like uh, the cookie fat bomb recipe. Yeah. And fat Ooh. bombs are a big term <laughs> in yeah. the keto world, which yeah. basically means they're very high in fat. And she made like this cookie recipe. Yeah. That's really I mean, delicious. it tastes like cookie dough and you can just make it in advance. <laughs> And, and, you know, you get a craving, just pop a few in your mouth and they're just like little energy bites, you know, yeah. just keep on trucking. Okay. Two more tips. One, uh, number six is to make keto fun. So as hopefully we've demonstrated today, it does not have to feel like this deprived, unhappy experience. We want you to really enjoy it. So, uh, finding out, you know, finding some cool products. Like again, I, I get very excited about the Beyond Burger. It's fun for me to eat that. She mentioned uh, food bars. There's a ton of vegan food bars out there. So that'll give you that sweet, satisfying sensation. And then just going to the grocery store and seeing what new products are out. Every time I go to Whole Foods, for example, I find a new vegan keto product. I mean, it's becoming a big trend. So there's more and more to choose from. And then the very last one, I actually think this is one of the most important things to remember if you're trying anything uh, diet related is, is to focus on how you feel versus how you look. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people, including myself, tried out keto for weight reasons. I was really struggling with my, my weight at that time. I didn't know what else to do. And that's what introduced me to this way of eating. 
Um, and I certainly did lose weight, but actually the benefits of how I felt far outweighed, pun intended, um, how I, what the numbers were on the scale, right? So it wasn't just that I had gained pounds and, and gone up in my weight, but I just wasn't feeling good. Nicole mentioned earlier the, the lethargy yeah. and um, the brain fog and, and just like I just, my digestion was really out of control. And so all of those things can contribute to us not feeling good in our bodies. So we're big proponents for if you can feel your best and this diet helps you out, that's great. Okay. And if it doesn't, then try something else because we don't want you to do keto just to do keto or just to, for superficial reasons. We want you to do it for, for something that really helps you thrive in all mm. aspects of your life. 100%. Wow, that is great. I am so glad that you gave us almost a sneak preview by sharing a little yeah. bit of your, your really important tips. That's yeah. wonderful. And I have learned so much about the vegan keto diet. I came in really as a novice, so I'm excited to, to learn more. And also, I appreciate your um, emphasis on just how we feel versus how we look and coming back to that, uh, what's important about the inside. Um, yes so that we shine on the outside. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. So tell us how, how can we get a copy of your book? How will we do that? Well, it is on Amazon. You can get the right now as of the time that we're recording this, it's available as a Kindle. So it's, if you just look up the vegan ketogenic diet cookbook, you will find it. There's a, there's actually a few other vegan keto books out there. So look for this one. Uh, or maybe you want to buy a few. We, we encourage that as well. And um, you can go to my website, WhitneyLauritson.com. There's a page about that. It's, on our, it's linked on all of our social media. Right. My social media is at EcoVeganGal and yours is. At Nicole Dursway. And so, yeah, if you find us on social media, just you can copy and paste our names uh, from the description of, of this episode and you'll easily find us. And you can email us if you're having any trouble with that. Yeah. Uh, it will be in Barnes & Noble. Target. It's on uh, Target and Walmart's website. Maybe it'll be in some stores as well. Yeah. It's on a few different places. Our publisher did a really great job with distribution. Yeah. So lots of ways for you to get a digital version or a physical copy. And then um, we are actually doing a special live event on February 11th. And uh, if you buy a ticket to that, it does include a, a signed copy of the book right. that we'll send out to any U.S. mailing address. So if you would like a special copy and some customized advice, on February 11th, we're doing uh, two special sessions where we're giving one-on-one -on -one advice to, or I should say one on two or two, yeah. two on one. <laughs> say. Both, of um, both of us will be there to answer questions. Coaching so people, yeah, exactly. It's like a, a little coaching, coaching session, session. Plus you get copies of our book. So if you're interested in that, we're sharing that on Instagram and Facebook and all that. You can look yeah. it up. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. The other bonus too, if people are watching this and they're curious about seeing some previews of the recipes, um, on Whitney's uh, IGTV, we have a couple of um, that we that we made and yeah. we just kind of documented it, so you can have like a sneak peek. There's a few recipes up yep. there already. So we did some video recipes at at Eco Vegan Gal on Instagram. If you look in the IGTV section, right. we did your chia parfait. Right. We did that broccoli salad, the bake the bacon salad. Yeah. And good. then um, we also shared a matcha donut recipe, and we might share another one soon. So right. There's some, yeah, some up there to kind of jump in if you want to, you know, get started. There's a few already posted. Mm -hmm. Wow. That sounds terrific. And I'm so <laughs> glad there's lots of ways to get a hold of this book. Yes. Yeah. To, to we want to make it you. as easy as possible. So. <laughs> All these special offers. That sounds great. Definitely send them to me. And when I will share along with this replay link, I will share all of those Thank as you. well. Thank I'm you so, so much. We yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. And we do have one question from um, someone who's tuned in. Great. And uh, he asks that, um, so this, this is a question that says here, Whitney mentioned that she has been vegan since 2003. Um, so mm -hmm. she must have been, um, well, it says she must have been pretty young then. So maybe he's, <laughs> he's uh, giving you, I guess, a, a compliment there. Um, what are Whitney and Nicole's vegan stories? Like if you have time, oh. if there's anything you want to share about that. Sure. This is a question yeah, for Mike. Plenty of time. Um, do you want to begin? No, go first. Okay. Well, I actually, I, mean, I always laugh about this, but I, I enjoy sharing the story because it's, 
it's just like the truth of how things happen is I had a crush on somebody that was vegetarian all his life. And then during the course of my crush on him, he went vegan. And I, I guess at, at that time I was like, well, maybe if I try this out, he'll be more interested in me. And so <laughs> that was kind of like the first time I really considered it. And I went vegetarian overnight. I remember I saw him one day in the afternoon and by the next morning I was fully vegetarian. I haven't eaten meat since that was in, um, May, 2000, was it May? Yeah, I think it was May, 2003. And then I started researching it because I wanted to make sure that I understood what I was trying out. I started reading a lot of books and was really drawn to it. And once I learned about the cruelty to animals and the impact on the environment, in addition to my health, it was a no brainer. And then I, a few months later, thought I would experiment with going vegan as well. I don't, I don't, I wish I knew more. I wish I'd like documented it. <laughs> like, what was my reasoning? I think it might've just been curiosity and, and it felt like a challenge too. And uh, back in 2003, it was not nearly as popular and certainly a lot harder to navigate it. Like, you know, the internet was different and yeah. um, there were just a few books out and the foods at the stores and restaurants were nowhere near what they are today. So I was just kind of playing around and it, it just spoke to me. I felt so much better physically, mentally, and emotionally and uh, have stuck with it ever since. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I think for me, it was a health journey mostly. Um, I had already gone to Cordon Bleu and I was a foodie and, and just kind of all on the foodie scene. But, you know, I have um, my grandmother, who's been my favorite person that's ever walked the planet. It was, uh, you know, she struggled. She had cancer twice and heart attack. And my grandfather, stroke, heart attack, diabetic. And then pretty soon my father had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and became pre-diabetic. Mm -hmm. And I kind of looked at my little sister and I was like, you know what? I don't think our family knows what to eat. I mean, this is going to come this is rolling down the hill. This is going to hit us next. And I just went down the information rabbit hole one summer. One documentary led to another and I did all this research. And at the end, at the time, much to my dismay, I was like, I have to go vegan to prevent all this. <laughs> like, what am I even going to eat? Like, you know, I just, you know, and especially being a foodie from Cordon Bleu, I was just like, oh, okay, but then who even am I, you know? Um, and so I started small and I just, and I encourage people to do that. You know, I cut red meat and then I cut pork and then I cut chicken and I just, you know, I found myself on this vegetarian ledge for a couple years and I didn't necessarily feel better. Um, and dairy was the last thing I cut. Uh, and I always tell people, I wish it was the first thing I cut. Cause it was the mm. one thing that when I cut it made a huge difference. I dropped 10 pounds within the first month without really changing anything else as far as like physical exertion or exercise. And it was amazing when I cut dairy and went full vegan, but that was the journey. And I, you know, I was very lucky. I had a partner at the time that went on the journey with me, as I mentioned before. Um, so we kind of were like buddies and we, you know, did the whole thing. Cause that was the other thing that's hard for newbie vegans is sometimes they become socially, um, they feel socially ostracized, you know, when they don't have a support system around them and nobody, nobody really, you know, embraces what they're trying to do and helps them. And so, you know, it's kind of nice that I had that partnership at that time. And now I have a flourishing community of vegan friends, like a vegan LA family. Like we have, we have all the support system and, and my family has embraced this. And my sister went vegan with me. My dad now eats much more plant-based. He's not fully, but eats a lot more that way. So um, yeah, that was my journey. And so I'm really beautiful to have it be kind of a happy ending or I don't know, it's still the beginning really, but to see um, the ripple effect of how many people because of my conscious decision have been inspired to try it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's been great. It's been really great. <laughs> Oh, well, both of you are huge inspirations, I must say. Oh, your, you. your motivation to do this and your dedication to um, veganism and the animals and also to health and wellness is just really um, inspiring to me. So I'm glad that you were able to share about your new book with our special activist author series. And this is something that we're doing for Activist Appreciation Month, which is a program that we do every year for In Defense of Animals to just celebrate all of the work that activists do all year long 
to help animals, to promote veganism. Yeah, so if anybody wants to find out more about this program, because we do have a whole month of programming going on, it, you can go to IDAUSA.org forward slash activist month. And then you'll find the replay actually there for this uh, this um, interview and our other interviews and all kinds of um, vegan therapist blogs and other goodies will be there too. So I hope that we'll, we'll get to um, share some of these wonderful resources with everyone. And I know your book is going to be a big, a big hit. And I'm certainly excited to help share and promote it. And we're just so proud of you. <laughs> thank you. We thank appreciate you. that so much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for having us part of this. It's yeah, an honor. it's such an honor to be a part of it. Yeah. If there's anything else you would like to say, just a well, I just, I mean, thank you guys for watching and um, please connect with us on social media. I know we both have such a passion for newbies. So yeah, anyone reaches out and just needs a support or us to send them a little extra love. We're here to help people on this journey. So yeah, we're, we're supportive and we're here. And also just to give anybody who's watching a pat on the back, because we all know that changing any part of your life is challenging. And especially with a diet, a lot of people struggle with it. They watch the documentaries, they read the books, they're interested in it, but it's, it's a, it's tough. So, you know, we've both been through that transition. We haven't been doing this all of our lives. We remember what it's like to make that transition. And so we're here to support as much as possible, whether it's about the keto vegan diet, or it's just about vegan on its own, uh, whatever we can do to support you truly never hesitate to reach out. We don't ever want you to feel like you're doing this alone. And uh, right. I would also say lastly, just thank you to everybody who's watching and, and having an open mind. There's so many different ways that you can approach the plant-based diet. And uh, we hope that this kind of gives you another perspective on, on a way to eat. Oh, wow. That is like the perfect ending to this wonderful <laughs> interview. I'm just so thrilled with everything that you shared. And we were able to broadcast this to our Carnivores Anonymous community, which they're just the perfect people who are so curious about veganism and want to learn and want to make the changes. So thank you for offering your support to them today and to all of us. And thanks to those who've joined us in this program, those who are watching live. It's really uh, really heartwarming and energizing to be on this this vegan path together, especially now that we know a new way that we can do this, yes. <laughs> do the vegan keto diet. So thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope you do well in your, your events coming up. It's so exciting and we'll be happy to, to sh share them, promote them. Um, we are getting a little, a little thank you for some of the people who've joined us to saying so wonderful that you have given a, a non-meat alternative for people and that we're all just very grateful to you and what you're putting out there in the world. Thank you. Thanks again. Oh, we appreciate Wonderful. you. Well, thanks so much and have a great day. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. Take Bye care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh. <laughs>